the Vernon Jarrett Medal for journalistic excellence is given for exemplary reporting on life in black America, as you have heard from Dean Wickham and from Hamilton Fish. This year's recipient is being recognized for a series of commentaries that she wrote for The Root uh, between June 2nd, 2015 and March 16th, 2016. Her topics have ranged from media bias to feminism, uh, from charter schools to Planned Parenthood, and from the police killing of Tamir Rice to the presidential campaigns of Secretary Hillary Clinton, um, Senator uh, Bernie Sanders, uh, Donald Trump, and Green Party candidate Jill Stein. Her voice is simply that of someone who has defiantly challenge the status quo. Uh, it is the voice of a writer who is unwavering in her defense of people she believes are being unfairly, if you will, treated. And that she has been unrepentant in her attacks on those individuals that she blames for this mistreatment and abuse. And so in giving this award today, we honor the admonition of the founders of Freedom's Journal, America's first black newspaper, uh, who in 1827 explained the need for the creation of that publication with these words, quote, we wish to plead our own cause because too long have others spoken for us, unquote. So African Americans today do not speak with one voice. In bestowing this award each year, we do not seek as a university or as a community to affirm the recipient's message so much as we celebrate their courage and their conviction in their exemplary reporting of that message and on black life in America. And so, it is the decision of the jurors that you heard from Dean Wickham. It is the decision of the Dean of the School of Global Journalism and Communication and that body's board of visitors that this year's 2016 recipient of the Vernon Jarrett Medal for Journalistic Excellence is Kristen West Savali. Please join me in giving her a round of applause, please. Wow, thank you, President Wilson, um, faculty and staff of Morgan State University, um, Dean Dwayne Wilkham, and the Global School of Journalism and Communication, and to those who nominated me for this award. As a graduate and supporter of HBCUs, it, it means the world to me to be recognized here in this space by all of you. You know, I told President Wilson, even though it's not the swack, <laughs> you all okay with me. <laughs> and I also want to give a huge thank you to the black women who have opened doors for me and loved on me and believed in me throughout my career. And I stand on the shoulders of so many. As black journalists and writers, it is not our job to always have the right answers. As subjective as, subjective as right may be, but it is critical that we have the right questions. Questions that disrupt dangerous narratives and dismantle dangerous institutions fueled by black oppression and death in this country. I often say if institutionalized racism is the poison, then mainstream media, media often serves as the IV drip that pushes it into society's veins to distort the humanity of black people. And Zora Neale Hurston taught us that if we are silent about our pain, they will kill us and say that we enjoyed it. So we cannot be silent about a country that pushes equality while ignoring pervasive and racial inequities, or worse, acknowledging them, but expecting us to ignore them. We cannot be silent when our children's bodies are stacking up in war zones across this country. We cannot be silent when black women are being raped by police officers sworn to protect and serve them. We cannot be silent when southern states where black women have the most restricted access to reproductive health care coincidentally 
have extraordinarily high rates of incarceration in for-profit prisons. That's on purpose. Fact, the Old South still lives through mass incarceration and wealth disparities, where racism is not, nor has it ever been, quarantined to the Deep South. And we can report and discuss and provide commentary on the Confederate flag, but we as black writers and journalists have a responsibility not to allow the atrocities committed under the U.S. flag go unchallenged. Positioning racism as only a belief system and not a capitalist power structure, with tentacles in every corner of our society, is the greatest trick that white supremacy has ever pulled, and is one of the lies that us writers and journalists should expose at every opportunity. And I speak today as a writer and as a journalist who often makes it plain and has often been dismissed as so many of my colleagues are or have been as advocacy journalists, as if advocating for the liberation of black people is somehow at odds with fairness and objectivity. Analyzing and reporting on systemic and institutionalized racism from subpar health care and mass criminalization to corrupt education systems and underemployment to the state-sanctioned terrorism that black people face at the hands of police officers across the country. Reporting on those realities, no matter what they tell you, is fair and balanced. It's fair and balanced to ensure that we report on violence against black trans women, that we discuss domestic violence and sexual assaults in our community, it's fair that we discuss how the war on drugs suddenly got real gentle <laughs> when white people became the face of it, but that black people are still disproportionately getting arrested. It's not gentle for us. But in all of this, we cannot forget to seek joy, both internal and external. We cannot stop expecting it, demanding it. We are beautiful. We are brilliant, we are black. And as Lucille Clifton says, every day something has tried to kill us and failed. We have to continue to report on that. So before I sit, I'm about to, <laughs> I'll have to bring my father, Theodore Bubba West, into this space. He died about five years ago, but he remains the original blueprint for all that I am. He taught me about the Mississippi Sovereignty Commission and surveillance tactics that have always been in place to police our freedom. As a city councilman in Natchez for almost 20 years, Natchez, Mississippi, he taught me that the best way to lead is in the service of black people. Perhaps most importantly, he instilled in me his life's model that was passed down to him from his father. What you do for yourself dies with you. What you do for others lives on forever. And I'm very much aware that my work is being recognized today because I use it in my voice, as so many of my colleagues do, in the service of black people, always, in always, and twice on Sunday. <laughs> and this responsibility, this honor, especially one named after a stellar journalist and unapologetic race man like Vernon Jarrett, is one that I do not take lightly. Thank you all so much. The ability of any dean to successfully work in their schools is inextricably linked to the leadership and support we receive from our provost. I am blessed to be led by Dr. Gloria Gibson, who will now bring closing remarks. Thank you, Dean Wickham. I have an extraordinary job, um, and I work with a very, very talented, caring group of individuals. I call them my team. Uh, we are the academic leaders of Morgan State University, and I am proud to acknowledge the work of Dean Wickham as a part of that team, a vital part of that team. So let's give Dean Wickham a round of applause. <laughs> a 
I would like to once again thank Kirsten. Uh, those remarks were, we could tell they were from the heart. And thank you very much, and thank you for the work that you do every day, and thank you for the courage to do that work. Uh, many of us may recognize that there is work to do and that there is injustice, but we decide to turn away from that. It takes courage, real courage, to face that and to voice that. And so we thank you so much for what you do every day. Um, you you uh, sort of uh, talked a little bit about the shoulders of those with whom you stand. So I want to just clarify that a little bit from the perspective of the university and the academic perspective, if you will. So you are the lineage successor to Ida B. Wells, who used her newspaper boldly to challenge the lynchings of blacks, to Charlotta Bass, the crusading California newspaper editor, to one of my sheroes, Zora Neale Hurston, the novelist who turned journalism, turned to journalism to cover the sensational trial of Ruby McCollum to Ethel Payne, who was known as the first lady of the black press, and to Frances Murphy, a former Morgan faculty member and publisher of the legendary Afro-American newspaper. As we close this year's Vernon Jarrett Medal for Journalistic Excellence Award ceremony, I offer you one last salute from the faculty and staff at Morgan State University. And on behalf of the School of Global Journalism and Communication for the work that you have done to give voice to the people who are too often voiceless. I want to thank you all for being here today at this wonderful, wonderful ceremony. And thank you again, Kirsten, for the work that you do every day.